everyone, it's Alice and last week the long list for the Women's Prize for Fiction was announced and this is one of the few like literary prizes that I sort of keep up with a little bit and every year I do a video about the long list sort of just going through it and discussing the books so that's what we're doing today. There are 16 books on the long list this year, some of which I've had on my radar for a little bit and then there are quite a lot I've never heard of and that I've read one of them this year. So we're just gonna go through the list and we'll see which ones I might be interested in reading. The book that I have read that made it to the list this year is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett and this is actually the only book I sort of thought to myself might be on it. I'm really bad at predicting books for the long list which is why I never do like a prediction video or anything because I just I don't know I can never really tell but I thought this might be on it and it was which is very exciting. I read this book last year and I absolutely loved it and I feel like this has a good chance of making it to the shortlist and maybe even winning but it's easy for me to say that because it's the only book that I've read. <laughs> then we've got some books that I have had on my TBR for a while and I was already interested in reading and the first one is one that I mentioned in like a an upcoming books I'm excited about video recently and it is How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Cherie Jones. Just the title alone makes me want to read this book and it's also set in Barbados which is really cool and the story is about these four people who are trying to make a better life for themselves I think and you know, I was already interested in reading this book and now that it's on the long list, I'm even more excited. Another book that I've had on my radar is Piranesi by Susanna Clarke, although I might be saying that wrong, I don't really know, but I get like Greek mythology retelling vibes from this and I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but I'm not familiar with the myth this is based on like at all, so all I really know is that it's like a Greek mythology retelling. And I've heard that this is good for people who liked Circe by Madeline Miller and that's what kind of made me interested in it. Then I've also had this one on my TBR for a while and it is Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Gyasi. Homecoming by this author was huge when it came out a couple of years ago. At least it was big on booktube and I remember reading it and really enjoying it. And I'd love to read some more of this author's work and this one sounds really good. It's contemporary fiction and it's set in Alabama and it's about this family from Ghana living there. And it says that the story is about loss and religion and science and love and family and I usually really enjoy books about families and like intrigue so I think this is gonna be a good read for me. Last of the books that I had heard of from the long list, we have Summer by Ali Smith. And this is a part of her like seasonal quartet, I think. And to be honest, I'm not interested in reading this book at all because I read another book by Ali Smith a couple of years ago and the writing style is just not at all for me. So next we have got all the books that I hadn't heard about before the long list was announced and this is always really fun because I always discover new and exciting books from the list and I've had really good luck with reading some of the books before so this is very exciting and first up we have got Because of You by Dawn French. This is contemporary fiction I think and it's about these two women who give birth at the same hospital and one of them end up going home with a daughter and the other one end up going home empty-handed. And then it says that 17 years later all of these secrets start coming out. Now from reading the blurb I feel like it's pretty obvious that the woman who went home with the kid maybe went home with like the wrong kid or something like the other woman's child. I just feel like maybe the blurb revealed too much. I don't really know. So I would love to know if any of you have read this book and feel like it's still worth reading because I can't really tell if this is like worth it or not. Secondly, we have got Burnt Sugar by Avni Dashi. So I do feel like I may have seen this cover somewhere, but I can't really remember. This is also contemporary fiction and it's about this older woman who has lived this like wild and crazy life but now in her older years she is starting to like lose her memory and I think the story is about her and her relationship with her daughter. I'm kind of on the fence about this one too, I don't really know. I might read it if it makes it to the shortlist. Next there is Consent by Annabelle Leon. I've never heard of this one but this is contemporary fiction again and in this novel we follow two pairs of sisters and they are really close until some sort of like tragedy strikes and I think that sounds really interesting. I love reading about like sisters and sisterly dynamics so I'm intrigued by this one and 
The blurb made it sound kind of complicated, but very fascinating. Then we have got The Transition Baby by Tori Peters. This one sounds fantastic, although kind of complicated. It's about these, like the novel starts with these three women, two of which are transgender, and they are in a relationship, but then one of them detransitions, I think, and he loses his relationship because of that. And then I think he gets another woman pregnant and the three of them try to figure out if they can form some sort of like unconventional family or something and that sounds so interesting. I really want to read this one and I'm pretty sure that this author is the first transgender woman to be nominated for this prize which is very exciting. Next on the list there is Luster by Raven Leilani and this is also contemporary fiction and I think we follow this black woman who is an artist and she falls in love and from what I read it seems like this book focuses a lot on this relationship which doesn't make me that interested in it to be honest although I don't really know so if any of you have read it and want to tell me about it please do. Then we've got another one that I kind of feel like I've seen the cover of somewhere but I don't really know where and it is No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. I can't really make up my mind if I want to read this book or not. I read the blurb and I didn't feel like I got that much from it to be honest. It left me kind of confused. I think it's about like a social media person who goes viral and like travels the world or something but then it said something about traveling through portals? <laughs> I have no idea. But it says that this is like a genre-defying novel, which makes me a little bit like apprehensive because I don't always love like super experimental books. I very often feel like when I read these types of books I'm just left very confused and things are kind of vague and I don't really like that. So I don't really know about this one. Next there is Nothing But Blue Sky by Kathleen McMahon. I've never heard of this one or seen it around, but it sounds really intriguing. The story is about this man who feels like he's had the perfect marriage, but then his wife dies. And as he is sort of reliving his marriage and his past and thinking about it, he realizes that maybe he didn't have such a good marriage after all. I just think that sounds really intriguing, but I will say, I would have never pick this book up by myself. Like if I saw this in a bookshop I would have just ignored it to be honest. So I would have never read this if it wasn't on the long list or if it wasn't recommended to me because this cover <laughs> does nothing for me. I know you're not supposed to judge books by their covers but sometimes you just do. <laughs> Speaking of covers though, this next one does a lot more for me. I really like it and it is Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers. This is a historical fiction novel set in 1957 in southeast London I think and it's about this writer who works for the local paper and feels a little bit stuck in her life but then she lands this like case or job where this woman comes forward and says that her daughter is the result of a virgin birth. I think this like writer becomes really entangled with this family and it just sounds very intriguing and very interesting. Second to last we have got The Golden Rule by Amanda Craig and this one is actually a mystery thriller which I feel like we don't often see on the Women's Prize so that's kind of exciting. And this sounds very much like Strangers on a Train. It's about two women who decide to kill each other's husbands which I'm very into. Lastly we've got another great cover and it is Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller. This is contemporary fiction once again and it's about this set of twins who have always been kind of different from other people and at the age of like 51 or something they still live at home with their mother in this like super rural place and then I think the mother dies and that throws everything into chaos. This sounds super weird but very fascinating so I definitely want to read this one. Those were all of the books on the list though. Lots of exciting ones this year. I've added loads to my TBR and I'm really excited to see which ones makes it to the shortlist and which one wins obviously. I'd love to know if you have read any of the books on the long list and do you have any predictions for which ones are gonna win and do you want to read any of them? Tell me all about it. Links to my Patreon and other social media will be in the description as usual if you're interested and I will see you soon. Bye!